I want to talk to you a little bit about um, life as an AFL footballer. Um, you know, some of the well-being um, strategies and programs that we're involved in and um, sort of most importantly, um, resilience as an aspect of life as an AFL footballer, um, how we're able to identify our strengths within resilience and areas where we need to improve and some of the programs and other tools that we use to improve our resilience. Um, playing football has always been a big passion of mine. Um, there was a lot of exciting times as a young kid playing in teams that were winning some premierships and got to play with my mates. Um, but that ultimate dream of playing AFL football, um, there was definitely some roadblocks along the way. My journey to the AFL, um, I didn't follow the traditional pathway. I actually didn't get drafted at 18. There's a, a national talent pathway that gets 18 year olds and pushes them into the AFL system. And I missed out, I wasn't picked. Um, so I had to really assess where I was at in my football career, um, whether I wanted to play at the highest level. And um, I realised that I did. And um, I set out on a bit of a, a plan over the coming couple of seasons um, to eventually achieve that dream to get selected by the Western Bulldogs in 2011. There are some real highs. Um, uh, you know, I've played in a couple of VFL premierships. Um, uh, I got to be involved in the um, the Western Bulldogs 2016 uh, flag, um, but I was on the sidelines. I was, I was the first emergency. Um, but it's fantastic to live out your dream and kick goals on AFL fields and, and be a part of winning teams. But um, stuff like missing out on the, the grand final, getting injured and coming off and um, realising that you've got a long injury setback ahead of you um, is really difficult. So, you know, that's a little bit about sort of the big picture AFL stuff, but this is a little bit more the nitty gritty, the day to day grind of AFL football. This is a, a mock up of um, what a week looks like for us. Um, so this is just a, a taken from a, a, a schedule template. So it's very similar to what we would do uh, on a week to week basis. Um, and I think it's, it's there just to show you that it, it can be quite relentless, the grind of um, AFL football week in, week out. We, um, we would have played on a Saturday, so um, on that Monday morning there's school visits for us to go on. So we're out in the community um, talking to school kids about a range of different topics. Um, and then we would come into the football club by one o'clock, um, get assessed by physios and, and doctors to see how we've pulled up from the weekend's game. And if we've got you know, maybe a broken finger or something, we might go and get a scan that afternoon and make sure that it's all okay. Uh, we lift weights, uh, we get massage, which is a bit of a perk of the job. Um, and then we'll train at about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then uh, we do a bit of a review after that. Um, and the week uh, continues on kind of like that. We've got um, a combination of uh, lifting weights, cross training, um, reviews, meetings with different coaches. Um, and then later in the week, um, there's selection, which is always a really difficult time of the week because you've generally got a change to the team. Someone will go in and someone will go out. Um, so we talk about uh, resilience and it can be really difficult to not be picked in a week and you have to actually play in the lower level. Um, so to be able to bounce back from that really quickly is important uh, as an AFL player because uh, if you have a poor week performance again at the lower level, it's gonna be even longer until you're back where you wanna be playing. So it brings us to wellbeing, and as I said, it's, it's really important. It's been uh, recognized across the industry, AFL, AFL Players Association and the clubs all recognize it. it's really important for what we do. Uh, and now we've installed a play development manager at every AFL club, at least one. It's a requirement and um, their role is in assisting players with kind of everything that um, they need for their off-field well-being or it could be um, some support with moving into state. Uh, younger players, older players, they're there to support um, what the player's trying to do off, um, off the field. Um, we also have access to a psychologist that's independent from the club. Um, this is something that early in my career I didn't really think I needed. I was a bulletproof 22 year old who you know, didn't really need to um, engage in that sort of stuff. And in the last three years, um, I've engaged with the club psychologist, um, independent psychologist, uh, nearly every week. Um, I actually have an appointment in a couple of hours and it's, um, it's not always uh, you know, about problems. It can actually be about strengthening um, what I'm good at. Um, and 
uh, improving my on-field performance and helping me with um, my day-to-day -day life, with my relationships, uh, with my partner. Um, uh, she, well, she's pointed me towards a lot of different wellbeing strategies and a few of them I'll go through now. One a really important strategy that I use um, before games, especially to go to sleep the night before a game, is breathing techniques. Um, it seems really simple, um, but it's actually something that uh, has a lot of science behind it and um, is really, really beneficial and I've, I've noticed the, the benefits myself. Um, there's an app, uh, and this is the logo from the app that I use, it's called My Calm Beat. Um, and all it is really is a, a metronome that you, you follow the breathing in and out, the picture of lungs, and it's just filling up and letting it out. And the science behind it, I'm not an expert, but um, I've been told that what it does is it helps to regulate your heartbeat and that helps manage the stress hormones in your body. So that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm massive on and it's a big part of my routine week to week as an AFL player. This is a new initiative at our footy club and I think it's fantastic. A couple of hours a week, we've got a dedicated wellbeing space at our club. We can use that for stuff like meditation, um, yoga, or simply just reading a book. We've got about half an hour allocated to that within that two hour block that we can go in there for. Uh, and that's actual club time. So that's even outside of um, the, uh, the time that's allocated for our personal and professional development. Um, so I think what we're seeing now is a trend within the AFL and within AFL clubs that having the players be really um, uh, not just physically well, but mentally well, um, gives us a really great competitive advantage. The average lifespan of an AFL player is, is four years, a football career lifespan. Um, and uh, you know, we, we need to be prepared for, for what comes next. You know, you, if you're 18 and you play for four years, you, you walk out of the game at 22. So we've got um, now, you know, four hours um, uh, in the week plus a day off during that week as well. So there's a day and a half for us to engage in personal and professional development. And it's a really, really um, critical uh, component of, of, our, of our football lives. But what I'm really here to talk today about is resilience. Um, I think anyone who has um, pursued not just sport but any, any career will have had some adversity along the way, something that hasn't quite gone their way. Um, there's a lot of things in our day-to-day -day lives, not just as a professional athlete, that we need to use resilience skills for. In, investing in other people can help you uh, through tough times because you'll know that you'll have people to rely on when, when, it, when it does get hard. Uh, humour is really important, it can help cut through some tension and when you are facing adversity um, it can just help to um, ease the burden on, on a group of people. Um, asking for help, being prepared to reach out, um, something that I was really bad at doing, um, especially early in my football career. Um, I was great when things were going well but when I, when I wasn't going well I just pretended like it was and it was really difficult for me. Um, and helping other people. Um, that reciprocal relationship is just a really important thing.